Hello YouTube. I just thought I'd do some little reviews on some of the projects I've been doing at the moment. Uh, it's really raining hard outside. <laughs> So this is a good time to either go camping or do some projects and things like that. Uh, I've got some stuff that I've been doing recently, which I'll show you, and some of the other stuff that's been going on around in life to uh, to prevent you from getting out and uh, camping. First thing I think I'll show you is the kitchen. I know, not very exciting kitchen, but this is what we've been doing for the last few months, is getting all the kitchen done. This is all fitted by someone, I did all the decorating and the wallpapering etc and uh, yeah so the last kitchen was in here maybe 10 years or so so it's time to, or maybe 15 years actually so it's time to refresh it and we wanted all this as well this wasn't here before so we put all this in to give us extra room so uh, yeah let's do a bit of cooking on that so that takes a long time, uh, getting the kitchen done, obviously the most used room in the house probably. So that's took a long time. There's another thing that happened uh, and I'll introduce you to a new member of the family now. So just hang on a minute. So this is Bella. She's a new member of the family. Uh, we had her from a puppy and uh, she's been really, really good. We've had a few puppies and Bella's absolutely been the easiest so far. You're looking for treats, aren't you? Um, Bella. What's this? Bella down. Bella down. Bella down. Go on, go down. <laughs> good girl. That's a good girl. So she's a uh, Pugalia, which is King Charles Spaniel cross um, pug. So she's three quarter King Charles Spaniel and a quarter pug. So she's uh, uh, more cavalier than pug. She's very good at training. Uh, she's been really good around the house. She's had no accident. She's going outside all the time. She's about six months old now. She's been to puppy classes. She's uh, having all the training she can get. She's bit, been out this morning in the rain walking, so that's why she looks a little bit wet. Uh, but she's great. She's uh, no hassle at all. She sits on your lap, uh, plays quite nicely. She hasn't been chewing anything. She hasn't caused any trouble in the house or with the kids. She's brilliant with the kids. And she's just, uh, she's just great, really. So, also I can make a lot of stuff for her sewing, which is quite handy. Um, but yeah, she's, she's superb. Bella, what's this? Yeah, that's a good girl. That's a good girl. What's this? Should we have a close up? You're very difficult, aren't you? Yeah, what's that? What is that? Come on. There we go. This way. Bella, sit. Good girl. What's this? Bella, sit. Bella, down. Pull it down. Good girl. You like your treats? Good. So, yeah, she's doing great. Uh, maybe she'll come out camping with me. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. Uh, she does get cold because she's only a little dog. She'll only stay this sort of size. Um, and, yeah, we'll see how it goes. She might go out camping when she's a bit older. Uh, but so far, so good. So, this is Bella. You might see her on a few videos. Uh, hopefully she doesn't have her own camping channel. <laughs> but yeah, she's doing really, really well. You're looking at squirrels. She's, she doesn't like squirrels, so uh, she has a good look outside see if she can catch any squirrels. There's a good girl. Good girl. So yeah, what's this, Bella? Yeah, what's this? Good girl. Good girl. Say hello. Say hello. Yeah. Good girl. <laughs> You're funny. So, right, we put you back. So what projects have we been up to recently? Loads and loads, basically. There's never time to be bored because there's always something to do and make with uh, camping, etc. So if you remember on my last trip, I had a problem with a pillow. I said I'd never find a good pillow for camping. Um, 
and I was wrong. So I have found a good pillow. Well, I didn't find it, um, but made one. And you'll see it uh, now, it's quite interesting design and stuff. I was gonna do the Sea to Summit pillows, because they look really good, but they're very expensive. And I have seen a few leak where the inner bag comes away from the um, valve at the top. So I don't really want to go down that route and have all that hassle and things. Plus it's a little bit heavy. So I wanted something really light. Um, so I decided to make one. So I've got this. This is tiny, obviously. Uh, it weighs 42 grams in total. So extremely lightweight. Lot of stuff stuck for it. It's nice and big. It's pretty big, um, and it's got a cotton voil surface, so it's not slippery. It's warm, um, and you don't slide around everywhere. It's just just a nice surface to have, like a pillow at home, really. But ultra ultra light weave. Underneath that, I've got a layer of uh, ripstop nylon, so no moisture goes into the pillow. And then on the back, I've got ripstop nylon, uh, super lightweight. It's not coated, so it's breathable, so it'll let any uh, moisture evaporate out that's in there. Uh, and then around the edge, I've just got a band going around the edge. So if you look carefully, it's got like a V there, a curve, and that sits around your neck. In the top, I've got a lightweight high vis zip uh, all the way round the end and round the corners, so it's easy to put stuff in it. And then I've got a little zip encapsulation thing to stop the zip catching on your down sleeping bag or anything like that with little pullers and things, a little diamond knot. So just undo it, and then you just stuff it with your clothes that you've got for um, camping. So it's not causing any extra weight or room in your pack. If I just get some stuff. So if you just want to like grab a, <clears throat> a jumper or something, you're not really going to wear a jumper at night. Just put that in. And then the best thing to put in there is like a down jacket. You're not going to wear that at night either. Well, you might do I suppose, but I don't. Or other coats and things you could put in here, Gore-Tex coat, anything like that. So, put the jumper on the bottom. Might as well put the down coat at the top. You can have to sleep on down. Obviously, it protects the coat and jumpers and things you put in here from you, from sweat and moisture and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to worry about that. If you put some of the clothes in here for the morning, uh, it'll also keep them warm. Obviously, not putting on cold clothes in the morning. Ah. See? You can stuff it as firm or as soft as you like with whatever you want and it is super super comfy um, so it's just like a real pillow. Uh, see the curve there to go around your neck and it stops it moving around as well, stops it sliding about and it's just the right size to go in a hood of a sleeping bag. Um, so I think I tried it out a little bit and it seems to work pretty well. Um, and I think this is going to be my solution for the, the pillow now. 42 grams, stuff it with your own clothes, keep them warm, dry uh, for the morning and uh, you should get a good night's sleep on that. So. so yeah, I'm hoping this is the answer. I really think it is. Uh, I've seen some other pillows that you can buy that are similar to this, uh, but not as good with the cotton um, layer on the top. So it's nice and comfy and capsulation on the zip's important because you don't want the zip uh, catching on a down bag because that would be a nightmare. So that's really important. Um, yeah, and it all fits into a tiny little stuff sack. So that's the first thing. Now, something a bit more technical, a bit more complicated. Um, first of all, this fabric here, this is a ripstop, but it's not nylon, it's cotton or poly cotton, um, polyester cotton. So it's incredibly strong. You can really put a lot of pressure on this uh, fabric and it, it just doesn't give at all. It's got a little bit of stretch to it, um, but there is a limit. Um, it's not waterproof, it's breathable. Um, and this is really great 
fabric. So I've been using this a lot for a lot of different things. It is a bit heavy, um, but you get the strength for that. So I'm really, really loving that at the moment. Um, now in here, we've got what I'm gonna call a, it's not a top quilt, it's kind of a condensation sheet, I would say. Now, when you're out in the winter, and you've got high humidity and the chance of high condensation in the mornings, uh, what can happen is you can be in your sleeping bag, produce a lot of heat, that heat goes out through the sleeping bag, and when it hits the surface wall of the sleeping bag where the cold air is, it will condensate. So you get a, quite a damp bag in the morning. And I've had this quite a few times when I'm camping, so I'm gonna try and solve it. I don't think I've seen this done before anywhere. Um, so what I've got, is I made a quilt um, with very special properties to try and combat this. So it's just a flat rectangular sheet, um, trapezoid, so it, it tapers down to the feet like your sleeping bag. Uh, on the top of the quilt, on top of the vapor, I gotta get a name for it, <laughs> vapor capture thing, I've got, um, a very, very fine ripstop nylon. This is about 50 grams per square meter, so it's ultra light. Um, just covering it all. And uh, it's got some joints in it. And then underneath I've got cotton voil, the very lightest weight cotton. And in the middle I've got synthetic insulation. So what happens is, you put this over your sleeping bag. It's got a uh, shock cord. It's got a little tie out. It's got shock cord, and then on the shock cord, it's got some loops, okay, all the way along. You put this underneath your sleeping bag or under your mat, depending on how you want to do it. And then shock cord goes round under your mat, and then on the other side, it's got a little toggle, and you just put the loop over the toggle, and that will hold it in place. And there's two of those uh, to stop it slipping around in the night. And what happens is, you put this on the top of your sleeping bag and as the hot air rises the interface between the cotton and your bag is not the cold barrier to generate condensation so the hot air rises comes out of your sleeping bag goes through the cotton which is wicking that's why it's cotton and it wicks any moisture out into the synthetic insulation goes through the synthetic insulation, which is also warm for your body, and then hits this layer. Now this layer is on the outside, so this is where it will condensate on. Um, this has got a DWR coating, so it won't hold the moisture. Uh, the insulation will do that. Um, so hopefully you'll end up with a very dry bag, with this wicking any moisture away from the bag, holding the condensation here. And then because it is so light, um, you can just hang this up in the morning and dry this and your bag should be dry all the time. Now this uh, weighs 330 grams, so it's quite light, it's not, not heavy, and it will add a couple of degrees to your bag because it's got insulation in it. It's got a loft of about an inch, maybe? Yeah, about an inch, I would say. So it adds a couple of degrees to your bag, so it gives you a bit of warmth, and it should manage the condensation problem that I've had in the past. So I'm going to try this out. I haven't tried it out yet, um, and I think it's, it's going to work. So, yeah, it could be really interesting. So something new, a uh, bit of an experiment, but if nothing else, it'll keep you a bit warmer. <laughs> uh, maybe I can get away with a lighter bag than this, maybe. I don't know yet. That's that. That's that project. Uh, next project was uh, cooking. I wanted to lighten my cook kit. I had a stainless steel mug, which is quite heavy. Good for bushcraft and out in the forest, but not really good for hiking. Um, and I was using a Trangia, which is also quite heavy for what it is, but I do love alcohol burners. And I had a big windshield, like aluminium windshield, I wanted to change all that and just get it as light as I possibly can. And now I've got a solution that I think I'll stick with for quite a long time. So this is the cook kit now. So this is it. This is the cook kit. Um, it's all way it, me. These are quite handy to get. Little digital scales. You can get them on eBay. Um, and they're very precise. 0.1 of a gram up to a kilogram. Um, but if you want to weigh stuff. So this is everything now. This is the 
the stove, the windshield, a 900ml pot, a 400ml mug, plus insulation uh, without the fuel. So you've got to add the fuel onto that. So all of that weighs 340 grams. So that's pretty good. Uh, it's all titanium. And I'll show you, I sacrificed a little bit of weight on the stove because I wanted it to last a long time rather than be a bit flimsy. Um, so this is Alpkit cookware. Which I really like. Just don't just stop it rattling around just these little bags. So this is the lid for the pot. So in here, got the 900 mil pot, titanium. We've got the mug, some silicone. So this the silicone is to go on the floor. It prevents you from burning the floor, and it's also non-slippy, so it stops stuff sliding around. Um, and then I got a little bit of tin foil. This is normal tin foil, not the super thick stuff. Just folded over and over, and you put that down. And this, uh, it's not really to stop you burning the floor. This is to reflect the heat back up into the uh, stove, because when you've got a really cold floor, the it sucks the heat away from the stove. It makes it harder for it to ignite and boil and not be as efficient. So you use a bit of a reflector to reflect the heat back. So in here as well, I've got the. Um, windshield. This is made from the tins for the turkey. So good time of year. Go down to Poundland, get a turkey tin or uh, where did I get this from? Lidl. Get a turkey tin um, and you can make one of these. So this is just rolled out flat with a rolling pin. So there's all sorts of stuff in it to make it strong when you buy it. And you just roll it out with a heavy rolling pin so it's nice and flat. Um, I, bent over the edges using a ruler, so it's nice, uh, strong and non-sharp edges. Uh, use the hole punch to go around to put the uh, ventilation holes in, which you need. Stop the flame going out. And then just did like a U-shape here, another U-shape there, so you can just put it together and it, it stays pretty, pretty strong. So the stove is in here. This is my mug. Got more silicone, because I like silicone, and it's just good for standing hot pots on. It doesn't melt or anything like that. That's the stove, and this is the titanium mug from Outkit, 400 millilitres. And I just put a Reflectix kind of um, warmer on there, just to keep some stuff on. Now, I didn't do a lid, Reflectix lid, because um, I find that it keeps it too hot, too long. It will last for about an hour, hour and a half when you've got all that on, which I don't need. So I'm just keeping it simple, it packs easier and just keeps it warm enough for, for drinking. So that's the pot. Uh, now the stoves, now these I'm making and I made it for other people as well. Um, my wife is also helping making it, doing all the stuff and it's through my wife's company. Um, and I'm selling these for about £12 UK only. Uh, so if you want a lightweight stove I can sort you out for that. Um, this is a little stuff sack and it's a it's called a cat boil stove which is what I'm using I'll just get the other one to show you I've got loads of them now called a cat boil stove now in America there's a guy called Zelf um, and on white blaze forums he invented these stoves and they are absolutely excellent so you can buy them from him and I'd recommend you do that um, because his stoves are very, very good. They're professionally made, um, excellent performance. Um, I'll put his uh, link down below. He designed them and uh, they're, they're called Fancy Feast stoves. And this is my version of his stove, basically. So it's um, a little bit different to his. I've got a very, very strong steel um, center. So you can put a very heavy pot on it. Um, if you like to have big stainless steel pots and things like that, it'll take that weight. Uh, it's got very small holes rather than notches to let the gas out for safety. Um, and I put a lot of fiberglass wicking in here. You can see. So the the when you you get some fuel, 30 millilitres of fuel is enough for all the cooking you need to do. You pull that in. There's little cutouts at the bottom, so the fuel goes through to the wicking. 
and because there's so much fiberglass in there it wicks really fast within about five seconds and then it's ready to light all temperatures so you don't need to do anything else and the whole stove weighs uh, 46 grams so it's a bit heavier than Zell. Zell's about 25 grams um, so I wanted the strength and I wanted this design particularly for fast wicking and uh, things like that so it's a very high performance stove very very lightweight um, compared to sort of gas canisters things like that even Trangier is much lighter than a Trangier so you just pour your fuel in light it up you can do it with a ferro rod and away you go and they're highly reliable all temperatures all weathers uh, the only thing with all alcohol stoves, you need a windshield, so I had a big windshield. Um, now I'm using this, so you just put that on there, and then you put your pot on. So the middle section is pot stand, as I said, so you put your pot on there. It's very stable, it's not going anywhere. The pot isn't supported by this This windshield, it's supported by the, the stable itself. Uh, it will boil um, 500 millilitres of water, or two cups of water, uh, in five minutes and the total boil time of 30 millilitres of fuel will be 15 minutes with this particular stove. So it's a really good for cooking up, uh, boiling the bag meals and stuff like that. That's all you need really. Um, so you put your windshield on uh, after it's lit or before it's lit, just light it, put your pot on. The windshield was designed for this height. The windshield's not part of what I sell. I only sell the stove in the bag with a little ghillie pot and uh, some, some background information for the stove, how to use it, etc. Um, but you can make your own tin for windshield. So that goes on there, and that'll protect it in all winds and uh, concentrate the heat uh, to make it more efficient as well. So yeah, that's my cook system now. So I've got the pot, uh, I've got the mug, insulated mug for drinks. I've got the silicone for uh, putting on the ground. Uh, I've got the reflector, I've got the windshield and all the stuff bags it goes in. Pretty pretty lightweight. So I think this now, I'm happy with this now. This is my setup for camping for, for quite a long time now. I think it's just perfect for me. So that's the stoves. Uh, you can contact me at uh, tackblades at gmail.com. I'll put the link down below. If you want anything like that, just give me a bell. Another project I've been working on, um, obviously now we've got Bella, she needs a lot of stuff that needs to be made. Uh, she doesn't have a choice in this, you understand? She will be made a lot of stuff and uh, she's a good subject for that. So I made a coat for her. Uh, <laughs> my wife insisted it had to be pink camo for her, so we've got a pink camo coat. Um, it's quite a simple shape, quite a simple design. It's just a, a square with a bit cut out for the neck. Now this is a technical coat, so it's 100% waterproof. What I've got is just normal cotton camo, both sides, and then in between I've got a layer of PU coated nylon, which is um, up to 10,000 hydrostatic head, so completely watertight. The stitching doesn't go through, so she keeps completely dry in this, works really well. This hole here, which I'm going to change on the next design, um, is if, because she's small, she wears like a chest harness to put the uh, lead on so it doesn't pull on the neck. Um, and that's so she can wear it and then the attachment for the chest harness goes through. So she's not pulling on the coat, she's pulling on the chest harness. I did make another coat um, where it was all built in with straps and everything else and you, you attach to the coat, but it didn't really work when she's pulling around or playing or if there's pressure on the lead it all changes and it's not good so this kind of overcoat with something else either on the lead or on the neck collar or on the chest harness this works much better and it just sits lovely it's nice and free so it's not constricting for her um, she can run about jump around and roll around and it, it, it's just great so that that goes on her um, that goes around the front round her neck there's no pressure on that at all then that goes underneath and that, that's enough to keep it on and it covers her shoulders, covers her hindquarters and all up around the neck. And it's nice and soft, there's no edges to, to rub or anything like that underneath. Uh, so that works really well, it's pretty lightweight. Um, just to give it a DWR coating, I took beeswax and with a hairdryer heated this up and then melted the beeswax onto the surface and melted it in. So this runs off now. Um, and also you've got the, the fabric in the middle so there's no way uh, that's going to get sodden or, or uh, 
let it get wet. So the straps are made out of the same material, they're just folded over and over with cross hatch stitching on there and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so the problem is she's a little dog and she's grown really fast. So she's grown out of this already in about five months. Um, it's all right round here, but the length has changed. She's about four inches longer now. So I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna use exactly the same design, but this time I'm gonna get something called L wire, electrical light wire, I think. And I'll put this in a bead in around the edge. It's about four millimeters thick wire. So it'll go all the way around the edge with a little pocket on the top or on the sides, I haven't decided yet, probably on the top. Um, and there's a battery box in there. When you turn it on, the whole thing glows around the edge. So at night in the winter, it's easy to see here and it's gonna look really good. Um, it's very efficient power-wise. Um, it should last a long time and I can make it waterproof the covering anyway, so it's not a problem. Um, so yeah, there's gonna be a glowing one next time. So I'll, I'll let you see that when it's done. This is the next thing I was working on. I've put this to one side at the moment because it's really hard and I'm a bit tired of uh, doing prototypes. So I'll come back to that and, and finish it off. So two things, one ultralight stuff sack. This is prob this could be the lightest stuff sack in the world. It's lighter than Cuban fiber. This is polycro or polycryo. It's a um, special type of material, it's pretty tough. Uh, but you have to treat it like Cuban fibre, so you've got bonded seams um, and I found a way to sew it so you can bond it and then sew through the bond uh, which gives it extra strength which is quite nice. So the whole stuff sack is 5.5 uh, grams which is pretty awesome. I don't know anything much lighter than that. Uh, so in here is my next project that I'll be coming back to. It's like very light. I've decided to make some gloves mainly because it's difficult and I like things that are difficult and a challenge and I wanted to learn how to make gloves from scratch um, rather than uh, buy gloves and stuff like that. So, so I did a lot of research and went into it a lot and uh, it's quite an art. Making a glove is really hard. Everybody's hands are different or designs are different. So I'm using quite a simple design. This is the kind of pattern you have to make. You put your hand down. These are custom fit. So you put your hand down uh, like that. And then you draw around your hand, add some seam allowance to it. And that's the main part. Then this is the thumb shape. Uh, again, this is kind of like that with gaps around it. And then these parts, uh, go in between the fingers so they're kind of the bits that go in between the fingers so you end up with a box on the fingers um, it's quite this is my fifth pattern I've done five prototypes all getting better and better and better so this is prototype number four not number five so these are just made out of cotton just to to get the idea of it you can see looking pretty good you've got the the bits in between the fingers uh, fits pretty well on the hand. This is a non-stretch fabric. You, I'm finding you really need a little bit of stretch uh, on the fabric. So just uh, looking at that at the moment. These are other prototypes that I made. Some are too small, some are too big, some are too baggy. This is all wrong. Look, all the stitching's wrong on this. It's all baggy. This one, I think this is the first one I made. Um, I couldn't get my hand in it at all. Uh, fits my wife, but not me. I can't get me hand in. So yeah, learn loads and loads and loads. But uh, at the moment, looking quite good. So I finalised the pattern design, and now I'm making what it's going to be is like a modular system for gloves. So I'm going to have a liner and a separate skin, and then which is a windshield and toughness, etc. And then an over very super lightweight waterproof over bit. So this is the cut out of the pattern for the fleece part for the warmth when it's cold um, so I've yet to sew these yet uh, so we'll have a modular system I'm thinking of using the uh, it going? Yeah. I think of using this fabric for the outer so you can wear this on its own or you can wear the fleece on its own or you can wear it together or you can add a waterproof layer if you want a waterproof layer. This is a bit water resistant uh, but not waterproof. 
And this has got a bit of stretch to it, so I think this is going to be the main glove, and then the fleece for the liner, and then the waterproof over shell. Um, so yeah, it should be quite a nice, lightweight, custom fit system in the end, so looking forward to getting that finished. But yeah, gloves, quite hard to do. There's not a lot of resource on the internet for it, so uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty tricky stuff, but enjoyable. So that's all the projects that are going on at the moment. I have a few more in the works. Um, I've designed a tent for next year. I might make another tent next year. Ultra lightweight. It's going to be, well, it's going to be about a kilogram. Uh, two man tent. Very simple to put up. Good for all weathers. Uh, very strong. In sill nylon. Uh, I was thinking about making it in Cuban fibre. But it's just too expensive to invest if it doesn't work. If you haven't got a lot of experience, that could be a lot of wasted uh, fabric at about 25 to 30 pound a meter. So yeah, I'm probably not gonna go Cuban fiber. I might even buy a Cuban fiber version of it. I don't know, we'll see. I'm looking at Z-Packs a lot at the moment. Z-Packs do some amazing gear, uh, mainly all Cuban fiber. They've got a lovely range of tents, lovely range of backpacks, and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Um, so I think next year I'm going to get one of the ultra lightweight backpacks they do because they look phenomenal. Um, I think the whole pack is about 630 grams, um, but I'm going to have the one made out of grid stop Dyneema uh, for ruggedness. It doesn't add much on weight, um, but adds a lot on durability. It's got a nice flex frame back and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna go lightweight on the backpack next year. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, right, that's it for today. Uh, just thought I'd do some updates on projects so you can see what's going on, give you ideas of things to make, etc. Uh, I'm gonna do another video now, which will be up a bit later, uh, which is kind of a tutorial session on sewing. So if you're interested in that, check out the next video. I'm going to make a stuff sack, which is your very basic uh, thing most people make. But all of the techniques in there for making a stuff sack, you'll use in many other projects. So I'll go into it in a lot of detail that a lot of videos skip. Um, so you can see exactly how it's done. And uh, yeah, so you can get, get cracking once you've got your sewing machine. See my other video for buying sewing machines. Uh, once you've got that and it's all um, maintained and oiled, you're ready to go and uh, make your first stuff sack. So I'll, uh, I'll show you where to get fabric from, how to construct it and, and all the rest. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, catch you in the next video and hopefully uh, make some more gear. Thanks for watching. Bye.